Hi everyone, it's TJ from Avid and welcome back to the final section of Pro Tools Fast Start. Now up until now, we've created a pretty cool track, but today we're gonna talk about mixing. Now here's a little disclaimer for you before we start. Mixing is a massive topic. You could spend years studying mixing and still only scratch the surface of what is possible. So unfortunately, we can't learn to mix start to finish in the short time that we have today, but what I can do is give you all the tools that you need on your mixing journey in Pro Tools, or at least the tools to get you started. So let's get into Pro Tools and let's talk about some of the things that Pro Tools offers as you start to learn how to mix your music. So when you're setting up a mix for your song, a good place to start is in a section of your song where all the instruments are playing. This way you can hear how everything sits in the mix together. So for our purposes today, I'm going to select this chorus right here. All of our instruments are playing, my vocals are in, and this part is going to loop over and over again and give us a really solid foundation on where we start adjusting things in our mix. Everything is playing at once. Let's hear what this sounds like. I wanna know. Awesome. Now let's start adjusting things in our mix. Up until this point, we have been working in our edit window in Pro Tools, but there's another window that you do need to know about, and that is the mix window. We can access our mix window by clicking on window here and going down to mix, or there's a key command that's really important that you pick up. It's command equals, and that toggles back and forth between our mix window and our edit window. Now in our mix window, the most obvious thing that you're probably going to see are these faders. Now the faders are somewhat self-explanatory. By clicking and dragging, you can move volumes up or down. You can do this in real time as your track is playing or while the track is paused. Let's take a second to listen to the mix in our chorus and see if there are any levels that we want to adjust faders on. So to my ear, the vocal octave part or the backup vocal part is a little loud. It's kind of competing with the main vocal. Simple. I just click here and drag my fader down. I can even do it while I listen to the track to find the proper place for it. I wanna know it. I like that right there. It's a small difference, it's subtle, but working together, changing these faders will make a huge difference in your track. Now, the next thing that you might notice in our mix window are these knobs above our faders. These are pan knobs. Now, what panning does is it takes your instrument and it moves it either to the left or to the right in our stereo field. When you're listening to a stereo mix and everything is coming at you right in the center, it can sound a little congested. It can be a little clogged. Therefore, we can use panning to just give things some space and really widen out our stereo field. Let me show you what that sounds like when I move my kalimba track all the way to the left or all the way to the right. You can hear how my track moves from the left and to the right, and I can use pans to kind of arrange things in my stereo field. Let me keep my kalimba panned to the right, and I'm going to also come over here and pan my guitar to the left to give us some more space in our mix. Let's hear what that sounds like. I wanna know it. soloed, it's an even more dramatic difference. You can hear how they're really spaced out. Now, that brings us to the next thing in our mix window that we can take advantage of, solo and mute. This S button right here stands for solo, and the M right here stands for mute. I can solo multiple tracks at a time to play things in group to hear how they're sitting together, or I can mute tracks to pull things out of our mix and listen without them. Let's hear what our track sounds like without guitar. I wanna know if it's good, babe. 
Another way to quickly access the solo or mute function is by clicking on your track and pressing Shift M or Shift S. Now, let's talk a little bit about EQs and compressors. You may have heard about these before, and they are extremely important when it comes to mixing. We're going to start with a compressor. I'm going to show you how it works. So let's solo our vocal track and use this as an example of what a compressor does. Now, our vocalist was very dynamic, awesome singer. I loved how some parts were quieter, some parts were louder to give energy or to build suspense. But sometimes in your mix, if something is a little too quiet or a little too loud, you can lose it or it can overpower. That's where a compressor comes in handy. Now, compressors are complicated and they do a lot, but simply put, a compressor really squeezes your audio signal so that the quieter parts get a little louder, the louder parts get a little quieter, and everything is a little more consistent. Let's hear what it does on our vocal track. I can add a compressor by clicking our insert here, going to plugin, going to dynamics, and adding this compressor right here that comes with Pro Tools. And again, I'm going to use a preset. This time I'm going to use vocal comp. So here's what our vocal sounds like with a compressor on. I want to know if it's grooving, babe. And here's what it sounds like with the compressor off. I want to know if it's grooving, babe. Now that's, again, a really subtle difference, but that's what mixing is. It's a lot of very small, very subtle differences that add up to a big change in your track. So compressors are going to be your best friend when you're mixing. You're going to use them a lot, and they're very, very powerful. I'm going to unbypass this compressor because I like the way that it sounds on our vocal, and I'm going to leave it right there. Now, when we recorded our vocal track, we bust it to our reverb send. And if we want to add reverb to any of our other instruments, we don't have to set up another send and another bust, and we don't have to add another reverb plugin directly to the track. We can actually bust them to that very same reverb send. That way we can bust as many things as we want, and Pro Tools will still only have to run one reverb plugin in that send. So for example, let's say that we want to add some reverb to our electric piano. Let's unsolo our vocals and let's solo our electric piano and here's what it sounds like right now. Now I'm going to click on our reverb send here. I'm going to play our electric piano and I'm going to move the fader up so you can hear what it sounds like as I send more and more to our reverb. Now, again, we can send as many things we want to this reverb plugin, and it's a really, really nice thing for our CPU because it doesn't have to run reverbs on every track. Let's move on to the next topic here, which is our mix bus. Now, our mix bus track is right here, and if you're wondering what it does, essentially, all of our audio in our entire session is running into this mix bus, and what we're hearing out of our speakers back to us is all of our tracks combined coming through the mix bus. Everything has an in and everything has an out. And right now, all of our tracks, as you can see, are running to our mix bus. You'll hear what I'm talking about if I play our track and move my mix bus fader up or down. I wanna know if it's you can hear how what I do affects our entire song. I'm gonna put our fader back to zero by holding option and clicking to bring it back to zero. And if you want to make big macro changes to your track as a whole, you can do that by adding plugins to your mix bus. Now, you don't want to over depend on your mix bus. Your mix should sound pretty good without a ton of plugins on your mix bus, but you can change things all at once utilizing the mix bus. Let me show you how I do that with EQ. Now, in this template, there's already this channel strip plugin on our mix bus, and essentially the channel strip plugin is an EQ and a compressor combined. Let me play our track, and I'm going to manipulate the EQ, and you can hear what it does. I wanna know if it's good, I wanna make it good. Now, those are really big, really dramatic changes. You probably don't want to do that to your actual mix, but you get the point. An EQ helps us to boost or cut certain frequencies that may be problematic in your mix. 
they might not be pronounced enough, and we can really fine tune and sculpt our sound. There's so much to know about EQs, and you're gonna find a lot on your journey that has to do with EQing and mixing, but for now, that's the basics of how an EQ works, and it can be very helpful on our mix bus. I'm gonna zero out our EQ again by holding Option and clicking to bring things back to where they were. Close out of here, Command equals to get back to our edit window, and that brings us to the last mixing tool that I'm gonna show you today, that is automation. So we've set our levels, we've moved faders, we've moved pan knobs, we've added plugins, reverbs, EQ, compressor, but sometimes we want those things to change. We want those values to change. As a song plays, sometimes you want certain parts to be quieter or certain parts to be louder, more compressed, less compressed, more reverb, less reverb. Now we can do that using automation and only editing specific parts. If I play our track from the beginning of the chorus, and let's say a part of this vocal octave track is a little too loud for my taste, say about right here. If I want to edit that phrase without changing anything else in our track, because everything else is right where I want it, I can do that with automation. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to our vocal octave track and where it says waveform on our track view selector, I'm gonna click and change over to volume. Now we see this little line appear and this shows us where the volume is at for this track throughout our song. And if I want to automate or change a particular part, I simply click and drag to highlight where I wanna change with my cursor I utilize my smart tool by moving my mouse up to the top of the clip and getting this icon, clicking and dragging down. Now let me back up to the beginning of our chorus and I'll show you what our fader does when our automation is in play. You can see that our vocal octave fader jumped down and then jumped back up when it was time for it to come back in, therefore just minimizing that little tiny part that I thought was too loud. Automation is extremely powerful and it's not just volume, you can automate a whole host of things in Pro Tools, so that's going to be a big tool on your mixing journey as well. Now the last thing I'm going to touch on, the thing that I want to leave you with, is to watch out for peaking on your mix bus. Just like when we plug instruments into our audio interface and turn our gain up and down, sometimes if we get a little too crazy with plugins or faders, our whole track can start to get a little too loud and our mix bus peaks, meaning it comes out of that green area and starts hitting the yellow and red and we encounter peaking on our mix bus. So keep a close eye on that. Make sure that you have a healthy, consistent level throughout your track and that you're nowhere close to peaking as you change values, parameters, and volumes. And with that, we have concluded our Pro Tools Fast Start series. You now have all the tools you need to go ahead and start making your own music in Pro Tools, and we certainly look forward to hearing your next big hit. Thank you so, so much for spending time with us. We know you'll have so much fun in your journey with Pro Tools, and you'll be so creative. We can't wait to hear what you do. Thanks again for hanging out with us. We can't wait to see you in the next video series.